All right, we're going to come out of the president's speech there in Menlo, Iowa. That, by the way, is very close to Des Moines. Uh, he's speaking at, at a place, called, a business called Poet, and what they do is make this ethanol gas, the, the E15 blend, which the president is not going to, he's going to take away restrictions that disallow its use during the summertime because, guess what, it creates smog. <laughs> and he's suggesting that this is part of his, his green agenda to uh, make it more likely that we would see more smog this summer. There were some other things he said that uh, Steve Forbes was standing by and listening to that he may have some issues with. It's kind of interesting how in pursuit of a green agenda, he's doing something that will create more smog. But the biggest uh, thing I think he would take issue with is, again, his focus on the Putin price hike, which, as we showed before he began to speak, has been starting the, the price increases, have been starting from pretty much the day he was elected. He, sa he also says that all of his programs, his trillion-dollar programs, uh, wouldn't raise a penny in taxes when we just heard Joe Manchin say that inflation is a tax, something that you've been saying for quite a while, Steve, especially among those who can afford it the least. What do you think of what the president just said? Well, it's very clear. His agenda, the green agenda, is taking a backseat to the election agenda. Uh, the speech was pure pander. Uh, with uh, the ethanol and things like that in a critical state, uh, with a congresswoman who is a, a seat is very much in jeopardy. But the whole thing on this Putin thing is a loser, David. People know things were happening before Vladimir right. Putin did that barbarous invasion of Ukraine. And so when he repeats that, people just shake their heads and wonder what planet this man is on and his team is on. So he does ultimately harm about his own credibility, which is obviously going to hurt them in November. And the policies he's proposing, if he was serious about dealing with the energy crisis, he'd be encouraging energy production. As you know, the Europeans have now recognized that natural gas is a clean That's fuel. Right. That's right. And, and of so course, the he, irony, he refused to recognize the that. The irony is that by closing down a lot of natural gas production we had in this country through new regulations, cutting pipelines and so forth, we are becoming more reliant than we were on coal. So we're actually burning dirtier fuels in order to create energy. I think we went from 20 percent of our energy needs by coal up to 24 percent in 2021. So we're going in the wrong direction. Well, that's right. And look at uh, uh, permits for expanding natural gas uh, ex exports uh, to, to Europe yeah. and elsewhere. If he really wanted to fight Putin, in addition to finally giving the Ukrainians someday the weapons they need to win this war, which they could have, they had the proper amount of weaponry and the right amount, right kinds of weaponry, uh, he would also be doing the natural gas, liquefied yeah. natural gas exports, so the Europeans have a viable, low-cost alternative. To Russian gas. But of course, Steve, he's a capitalist. We just heard it again. <laughs> yeah, whenever, whenever, whenever anyone says, when somebody like that says he's a capitalist, it's like somebody's just saying, oh, I'm a country boy. You right. clutch your wallet. Right, right. Grab your wallet. That's the old expression. Steve, good to see you, my friend. Thank you so much for being here. Appreciate it.